Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox. You're watching Show of the Week. I'm Mike. And I'm Andy. This week, I gave it all up to become a simple, honest slime rancher. And he, and he escaped, escaped with his wings. Yeah. Oh my god. They're getting out, Andy. Oh my god, we need those higher no. walls. Take it down. Dead. Stop it. Oh no, it got no. in. It got in. It got no. in. No, no, no. No, no. no. Oh, it ain't oh, the rooster, you, you son of a. So, how come you're still here? Well, I immediately gave all that up to become a simple, honest YouTuber. Farming is dangerous, man. And what have you been up to since your two career changes? Well, I thought I might have another career change, become a charismatic villain, but then I changed my mind. Oh, how come? Oh, I saw what happens to those guys in Far Cry games. I shall lead you to the gate, for you are my children and I am your father. Like, have you seen that guy from Far Cry 5? He looks the, terrible. He's got the top knot and yeah. stuff. I don't know, he might, he might turn out to be good. Yeah. Not Maybe. a charismatic villain, but I mean, it's not, it's not looking good. Is this it? is a Far Cry game, right? And, you know, there are very different settings for Far Cry games, but there are always sort of common themes, and one of them is a charismatic villain. So there's the guy in this, uh, in this new one who's a kind of cult leader, right? Yes. Uh, but we'll, we'll see, you know, um, Pagan Min had... Some, Some redeeming quotes, maybe? I don't know. Excellent I've... crab rangoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good tailor. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like we made a video about why he was good, actually. Yeah. But uh, I can't remember what I was thinking. <laughs> well, just but... run a clip. Yeah. While it is clear that Peg Min is a violent, tyrannical maniac, as ever, context is key. Oh, there we go. There we go. I couldn't have said it better Lovely myself. Lovely guy. <laughs> yeah, nice uh, Okay, That's so... That's cool. We've had some really good uh, Far Cry villains. Though. We've had, like, Vars. I like this phone. This is a nice he was kind of unhinged. Yeah, a little but he bit. wasn't the main villain of Far Cry 3, was he? No. He was like the sub. You, you kill him like three quarters of the way through the game, and then you've got, what was it, Hoyt? Yeah, who yeah. is less good. But then there was the Jackal in Far Cry 2. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody kills me. Nobody. Right. He was a kind of charismatic villain. Yeah. Um, who else have we had? There was uh, Ugg. A Ugg, caveman. Ugg he the caveman. Ugg, but he was a charismatic caveman. So this is clearly like something that is is sort of common among among Far Cry games and stuff. And I, I think if it can match up to Vars and Pagan Min, I think we'll be we'll be doing pretty well. Man, man, man. Base attacks. Oh, outposts. Yes, outposts. Right. Yeah. So they're a bit different in the new game. They're sort of. Um, little towns and things, right? right? Right, yeah, they showed that demo at E3 where someone was clearing out um, Falls End, I think yeah. it was called. Right. And uh, um, it had like a gas station and had a bunch of other like little shops and stuff. Yeah. So... Because it's always been a, a, bit, a bit strange as a sort of, you know, these outposts have always been kind of like rickety sort of uh, thrown together encampments for, for a sort of militia, yeah. basically. But these ones are sort of semi-functioning towns, it's just they turn into massive shootouts. Um, well, they don't have to. No, That's how you, how you take them out. That's true. Although, uh, I did play a bit of it at E3, mm. and I, I did not manage to do it without alerting everyone and getting shot at a lot. It could be worse. You could have marched yeah. in with an elephant and a grenade launcher. Yes. Which is what I did in Far Cry 4. Not many elephants in Colorado, I don't think. <laughs> hi. Oh Say my hi. God. Say hello to Stab. Oh, he's fleeing in terror. Um, maybe there's a safari park nearby. Yeah, maybe like that's a, one of the outposts. A whip safari snade. park. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, get on that. But, I mean, that's another part of right. the Far Cry formula is animals now. I mean, right. I, I actually never played Far Cry 1 or 2. So yeah. Well, Far Cry 1 was weird. It had like aliens and all sorts of weird mutants and things. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. it got real strange, real. Like it started out with you just shooting guys in your Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> and then like it Dude. sort of developed into weird sort of alien mutant monster things. Aliens. So then, then from Far Cry 2, it became a little more realistic. They sort of ignored the first one. Um, well, you know, you know, I mean... Was that the one where you kept getting malaria? Yeah, exactly, that's semi And then all your guns jammed and you couldn't use them. Yeah, and then you died too in, the, in the desert of malaria. Yeah, that's... I don't want to get a jammed gun. But the animal stuff. Right. I mean, that was that a big part of the previous game? Well, it was a big part of Far Cry Primal, which no one played. So now... We played it a bit. I mean, we, we played a little bit. A little bit. I guess Far Cry Primal was a bit of a non-starter because I don't think people really connected with the the caveman thing, but the beast taming mechanics were kind of fun and interesting mm. and the idea of having companions and things. So they seem to be... a novel idea to set yeah. a game in the prehistoric era. Yeah, yeah, brave. I'm glad it exists. Yeah. I just didn't play it really much no. and no one else did. But yeah, so good to have that kind of... There's a bit of that kind of animal companion stuff 
uh, reworked for the new game. But there are also other companions and stuff you can bring in. But in this one, you can bring a, like a sniper along, or you know, there's a guy in an airplane and yeah. things like that. Looks like you can use some help. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, he can like uh, bomb people and stuff. Like yeah, that, yeah. So that's pretty cool. And then you got the dog. Who... Yes. Uh, fetch his guns, as I understand it. Which is it's called Boomer, right? Boomer, which is adorable. What do you think of Colorado as a setting? I like it. It feels very sort of, uh, you know, although there are a lot of games set in the US, and Far Cry's traditionally been about exotic locations, like Far Cry 3 was an exotic island, and Far Cry 4 was up in the Himalayas sort of area. Um, it might seem like a bit of a step back to go to Colorado, but actually that kind of like faded Americana sort of, you know, small town, um, kind of stuff really appealed to me from what I've played so far um, and I think it, it, it makes it all feel a bit closer to home like this is something that could happen somewhere. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to need a really good explanation as to why they don't just send in the National Guard. That's a good point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like some isolated island or yeah. you know a troubled like state in in the middle of nowhere yeah it's it's america america <laughs> in colorado so someone call the cops they, yeah. i mean they will have to unlike why you can't yeah just <laughs> phone them up on your cell phone maybe that's oh that's it they that's the end game you have to turn on all the cell phone towers right and then, and you, then can, you can finally call the cops and then you go hello can you come in and then eight tanks that'd arrive, be amazing and just blow up the and that would be the most Far Cry ending to a Far Cry game ever. Yeah. Because Guys, climbing towers yeah. is such a Far Cry thing. Guys, I really need to climb all these towers. <laughs> Vehicles seem to be a big thing again, right? I mean, uh, I remember in Far Cry 4 flying around in that little helicopter thing. Yeah, that which was like was, powered by rubber bands and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was really rickety. And yeah. if you flew it too high, it sort of got starved of oxygen and fell out of the sky, which was a little bit alarming. Yeah. I think in the new game, uh, there are going to be sort of aeroplanes that you can fly and they will actually be functioning vehicles rather than just a helicopter oh, okay. that's like artificially limited. Um, the only thing I, I, I don't know is whether you can do that awesome thing you could do in Far Cry 4 where one of the other players like grapples onto the... Oh yeah. There's a chimney over here. I could try and drop you in the chimney. <laughs> no! You want to go up a bit? I'm about to go face first into the chimney. Detach! Yes, I'm standing right on top. I can see you. I can see you. Hello. Hello. Good work. I can see you right down there. Yeah, see ya. So it looks like Far Cry 5 is trying to take the elements of the series that people really liked mm. and combine them all into one game. Mm. It, I still sort of remains to be seen whether that's going to work because I think if for me what I've seen so far it all still feels very sort of Far Cry 3 yeah and which was a great game and I remember playing it at the time and being blown away by it but things have moved on quite a lot since yeah, Far Cry 3 absolutely. came out so I mean it's going to have to show us something new if it's going to capture people's minds in 2017 yeah. we we still haven't really seen much of it considering it's still quite an unknown quantity and I think it could it could be really good because the Far Cry series has been great in the past but also I mean Far Cry Primal was a bit of a disappointment mm -hmm. so I think if they want this series to be something that you know keeps keeps on going they really need to win people back with this one yeah yeah it's sort of they reinvent the setting every time yeah but maybe they need to reinvent some of the mechanics as well so what's your what is your favorite of the far cry games is it three yeah is that three. the one that you really appealed to three was definitely the one i spent the most time playing four was four was fun mm. uh, i think i just i like the setting of three more um Vass was a really good villain, mm. and I got I got really into the upgrades and stuff as well in in through and just you I got a mad tattoo, didn't you? Yeah, you had the like tattoo to... with, and had the um, the different like the heron and the shark and the mm. spider, and you could choose all these different like stealth takedown upgrades. And by the end, when you could chain together takedowns and you were just like hopping around like the and predator, or something. yeah, like <laughs> the guy from Doom. It was uh, that was yeah, it was really good. I played more Far Cry 4, I think, than okay. 3, actually. Although we did do all that Far Cry Athlon stuff, which was amazing. Yeah, um, Yeah, I played a bit more of 4. I, you know, I, I, again, the, the, the setting really spoke to me. I love the, the being out in the mountains and stuff yeah. and the real difference in kind of elevation and, and, and just the idea of kind of immersing myself in a, in a totally different... Like, because there was a sense of a culture yeah. there that maybe wasn't, you know, the Far Cry 3 was kind of tropical island and, and there were the pirates there and things like that. But it was very much their sort of pirate yeah. installations things. Whereas there was a sense with Far Cry 4 that you were you were in a completely different country that had its own sort of almost functioning sort of civilization there. So Yeah, I did really like Pagan Min and I liked cool. how he kept sort of phoning you. And yes. being like, hey man, how's it going? And you're like, no, you're, I'm trying to thwart you. Yeah. And he's like, that's cool. Let me know how that's going. More games should do that. This is important. Listen, candles are now illegal. What? 
Yes, all of them! Jason Brody and all his frat boys made a pro yeah, twat. Pretty awful. <laughs> oh, yeah, and God, the ending of Far Cry 3 was terrible as well. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, it definitely had some serious problems. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean. Still, overall, a good game. Overall, it was a really fun game to play. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man, and it had that mission where you had to burn the field of marijuana. Yeah, to well, the dubstep play. Skrillex. Skrillex. <laughs> dubstep. <laughs> Damien Marley song. So more of which that was please. great. Yeah, more of that sort of thing would be great. Holy <laughs> 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 this is awesome! Jane! Jane! Is she not in here either? Yeah, she's supposed to be. She left a note on your back again. Man, I hate when she does that. It's like, why do we even have an email system? Sorry I'm not there, guys, but I'm away on important business. Is it a dog? I saw a good dog, so I followed it to see where it was going, but don't worry, I've prepared this video for you to watch while I'm away. Is it about dogs? It's about dogs. It's about dogs, Mike and Andy, because frankly, they don't get the credit they deserve. <coughs> At least not in video games, where in Far Cry 5, for instance, your very good dog, Boomer, is fetching you weapons like he's your personal gun caddy. And you know if he had opposable thumbs, he'd be pulling that trigger too, rendering your presence in Hope County completely unnecessary. And just consider these other computerized canines equally deserving of an appreciative belly rub. He's gonna kick the ha! Out. You like that, you stupid mutt? Your precious puppy in Fable 2 is one who'll seek out treasure on your behalf, scouting out valuable loot that you can, I don't know, invest in your real estate empire like a true hero of property management. On top of, and despite that, your Fable 2 canine companion's love for you will always be at the max level, no matter how much you are a sadistic bastard or landlord. Who was there for you the time you got thrown out of a window? This guy. Although, if you were really serious about protecting me, Pooch, you'd have been poised underneath the window to break my fall, just saying. Hey, boy, you know any tricks? Let me ask you a question. To you, does the word dog meat mean poor quality meat suitable only to be eaten by dogs or the flesh of an actual dead dog? Let's go, boy. Because either way, it's what you've named your dog in Fallout. Yet despite being named that name and not something that befits his handsome face and loyal personality, dog meat will follow you to the ends of the irradiated earth. Unless, of course, you ditch him for a different companion character, like this one. You are coming with me, mutant meat. Strong travel with human. Oh, I see. He gets a nice name, does he? Arcade side scroller Shadow Dancer introduced us to this adorable doggerino, who is incredibly not actually named Shadow Dancer himself. This feisty hound will savage the living heck out of the enemies that you, the ninja protagonist, sick him on. And of course, you, the ninja protagonist dog owner, will get all the credit. That's just ninjas for you. This good dog also has the curious property of reverting to his helpless puppy form when he gets hurt in a fight, which... I'm sorry, I can hardly bear to think about. And after you put him in harm's way, you monster. Sorry I didn't wake you. Thought you could use a sleep. You'd think in the near future world of Call of Duty Ghosts, where the US has gone to pot and civilization is on the ropes, all the dogs would have abandoned humanity and formed a new, better society that didn't create giant orbital space weapons. But they didn't do that thing I just said, or at least this one good dog didn't, who is Riley, who's a good boy. Yes, he is. Hey, Riley's got something. Riley also tolerates you fitting him with a bizarre combat vest with a vibrating collar, camera, and radio, turning him into a kind of remote control death rumba <laughs> that you can steer around the battlefield and have murder your enemies. <laughs> That's a good deadly boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Here's the dog you brought back. Bit of a troublemaker. Not sure about the breed, though. He'll get bigger? Uh huh. Like this. Speaking of ridiculously competent dog companions, Didi of Metal Gear Solid 5 fame deserved several field promotions in the course of his PMC career. May I suggest Sergeant Major D Dog? That has a nice ring to it. 
At the very least, this battle hound deserved a few medals on his collar for all the times he unsheathed his own combat knife and stabbed an enemy to death with the knife in his teeth. I don't see you doing any hands-free mouth stabbing out there, big boss. My point is, dogs are great, even, and or especially, when they can stab a baddie with their mouth dagger. Although now that I think about it, Dee Dee would have had big sharp teeth. Did he really need the combat knife at all? Hmm, I'm gonna have to look into this, but it shouldn't take more than a few days. Anyway, I'll see you back in the studio. Love from Jane. Anyway, see you back in the studio, love from Jane. Man, that was a long note. Right? Anyway, now it's time to see what you've been saying in the comments, and what Game of Thrones Lord of Light is showing us in the flames. Actually, I think that might just be that the kitchen's on fire. A grim prophecy from the Lord of Light there. First up this week, your comments on last week's show, which looked at the upcoming Agents of Mayhem, as well as the least secret secret agents of all time. The Milkman Conspiracy is a Psychonauts level set in the mind of a paranoid security guard and is populated almost entirely by sinister government spies called G-Men. I like to trim hedges. It is a good day for that activity you mentioned. Commenter Andy McPee was confused by at least one entry on the list, saying, Not really sure why Psychonauts was on this list. Who were the secret agents? That road crew should keep an eye out for them. Yeah, maybe those nice sewer workers can help them out. The sewers are not safe for civilians, and they smell very bad. A lot more comments on the Splatoon 2 Splatfest fallout from this weekend, with a lot of you pledging your allegiance to Team Ketchup or Team Mayo. Mayo for life. No way, Ketchup rules! I'll kill you! I kill you first! Get out! Yeah! Commenter Craig Lang here on the right side of history, saying, Out of all the possibilities, it was ketchup and mayonnaise that invoked the wrath of the Oxbox crew. Seriously though, I'm with Mike. Mayonnaise for life. Damn mayo, we will have our revenge. Commenter Revian Foolis, meanwhile, has declared himself the official historian of the Source Wars with this stirring account. And so the great Source Wars of 2017 began. Many heroes rose and fell until finally, at the end of the bloody final battle, the Dark Mistress Jane, whose machinations began the conflict, finally stepped from the shadows and, with a voice to challenge the heavens, proclaimed the greatness of mustard from now to eternity. That did happen, yeah. Is that why we have to have mustard on everything now? I did wonder. How's that cereal? It's a bit spicy. Moving on, here are your comments on this video in which we took on Hitman's Dance Macabre contract that asked us to drop things on people. Put him in a box. Put him in a box. In a box. Put him in a box. All right, good work. It helps, I think. Yeah. A grateful message from commenter Matthew83 here who says, Oh great, now I'll get weird looks for singing Put Him in a Box All Day. Again. You are welcome. It also works for push him off a cliff, drown him in a loo, and explode him with a duck. FYI. Go! Oh, 47, come on, come on! What? Fall! What? Fall! Oh, oh. Falling. Target. Did it get them? Yes, target. It's playing the music. Yes. It's playing the music. Quietly, hopefully. Yes! yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And you killed the non-target, you killed the guy reviving him well. as well. Well, that's what he gets. A lot of people rightly outraged that my spectacular bell kill didn't count as an accident, such as Ryan Beeston who says, Andy, you've been cheated. You dropped a massive bell on the target. How can they say you didn't use a falling object? Unless when you gave him a friendly tap with the crowbar, you did more damage than you expected to. Friendly tap. Uh, there we go. What? I barely touched him. Twice. Right. In the face. Yes. With a chroma. Look, a more plausible theory offered here by Ben Brown, who says, Clearly the church parishioner snapped the priest's neck before the bell landed on them both. That's what happens when you hog all the communion wine for yourself. So in a way, you are enacting justice on a murderer and are therefore a hero. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Finally this week, your comments on this video in which we ran down some of your least favourite forced stealth sections in video games. Just the other day, we went off on one about the stealth sections in games that made us tear our hair out and post the hair to the developers, because what am I going to do with all this loose hair? Judging from the YouTube comments, several of you share our depilatory frustration over a number of sections of dodgy stealth in other well-meaning video games. Once again, more great suggestions from you guys, a strong indicator that we can continue making this video until the end of time. Such as this from Guts the Undefeated who says, How about Call of Duty Infinite Warfare? That one mission where you had to save hostages by being sneaky sneaky or else they would have been killed to death. But there aren't any stealth mechanics. There must be stealth mechanics in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Why? Because I never see anyone repairing my ship, and yet when I check back, it's always in perfect working order. Oh uh, yeah, that is pretty stealthy. BC on PC, meanwhile, suggests, How about Burger King Sneak King? Not any particular level, just the whole game. Oh, I thought that was a horror game rather than a stealth game. <laughs> Why?
All oh, right. Finally, commenter Demolition Gaming offers the following. That DLC from Assassin's Creed 2. I think it was Bonfire of the Vanities. There was one mission where you had to assassinate a doctor. I spent three hours on that mission until I decided that the only way to beat it was to sell my soul. Hey, what did Jane end up doing with that? Oh, nothing, I don't think. She just likes to collect them. All right, well, as soon as she's not here, should we head back to the studio? Yeah, okay. Don't forget your cereal. Fine. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. But before you go, why not round out your viewing experience with the rich, smooth taste of like button? You want people to lick the like button? No, you can't press a button with your tongue. Just and then press it with your hands. It's metaphorical. What about on a touchscreen? No, the t tongues don't work on touchscreens. I, I completed I the entirety tried. of Candy Crush Saga with only my tongue. Is that why there were tongue marks all over my iPad? Yes. This the it looked like delicious I... candy. Oh my God. Andy. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. No court in the land would convict me. Oh I'm locking that iPad up in a cupboard. Still no sign of Jane. Oh, she said she was going to make lunch. Hang on, is that another note on your back? Ugh. See, this is why we have emails. Guys, while I'm following this good dog, can you please turn off the oven at 1.30 or else the kitchen will go on fire? Oh, right, the kitchen. Why didn't we put that fire out?